as my mom. Equally as cute as she is funny. I walk into a room and you see her, that's the type of person you see first. She lightens up the whole room. She just could walk in here right now and people would just go, you know, and notice her. You can't help but smile when you're around her because she's always happy to see you. She's one of the reasons why I faced the scariest thing I've ever done in my life. She, right off the bat, took care of everybody. Little did I know that she was also writing a book as well. Every page that I read through, anything that I was going through, I just thought, this isn't that bad. Nothing could ever be that bad. I mean, if Sandy can get through this, I can get through anything that the world throws at me. The only thing I ever wanted was to be a mom. When you have a child and you see that, that baby for the very first time and you hold them and you, you look at them and he's like, I made this. His dad and I made this and I'm going to nurture this child. I've just recently started facing everything that, uh, that happened 10 years ago. And it was just a perfectly sunny day. There wasn't a cloud in the sky. That's a day that I'll never forget. We had practiced that morning. I had just released the players. There's nothing that can prepare you for that. You're 16 years old. It's one of your closest friends. Just, you talk to him two hours beforehand. I remember when this happened to Tyler. I was at a fair and all the girls came crying and crying. Tyler was an amazing friend of mine. It didn't matter what sport you played, who you hung out with, what you were into, what music you liked. Tyler loved you and you loved him. There's never anyone that could say anything bad about him. They called and said, you need to come home right now. Um, Tyler's been in a bad accident. She didn't know exactly what had happened. He was over at Providence Hospital, and she asked me if I would go there and make sure that everything was OK. And it would take me about four and a half hours to get home. I was up north with my sister, and it was the longest drive of my life. friend of mine at the time, he was waiting there for me. And uh, I just remember looking at him and I said, my boy's gone, right? And he couldn't say anything. It's just tears rolling down his face. And, and I, all I remember is going to the floor. And um, they got me up, put me in a wheelchair and took me up. And then it's not what I expected to see. And we kept him maybe another two hours so that friends and family could come in and, and say their goodbyes. And then uh, we turned the, the life support machines off. Yeah, it's brutal, brutal. I don't wish that on anybody. There was a, a huge candlelight vigil on the football field. I'll guess a thousand people were there. He was just everybody's friend. She's held it together, but you know, any grieving mother, you don't know what goes on behind closed doors. I was in a pretty bad place. They didn't want to leave me alone. And looking back at it, it makes me feel funny that I, I was not in control of myself, but I wasn't. She really went into a deep spiral. Seeing that anguish, uh, seeing that uh, just such deep pain and not being able to do anything about it, not being able to fix it. Can't imagine what she was going through. Like, I just lost a friend, but she lost a son. Austin lost a brother. I saw how hurt my parents were and my family and uh, didn't want to be a burden on them by being broken down as well, so I just chose to become emotionless. Is this my son Austin? I had to be there for him, and I wasn't for the first year. I wasn't even there for myself. We fell apart. I wanted to go do my own thing, and she was so scared of losing another son. 
I would do not very bright things like go take a walk at midnight by myself. I was drinking too much because that was my only escape. That was the only thing I found that was right there and able to uh, help me go to sleep because I would never be able to fall asleep. As much as I wanted to not listen and run away and all the above, I did that for 10 years. This loss can't be what makes him who he is. She gave me the strength to uh, call in and uh, in my, admit myself into a treatment facility. My mom was there. I gave her every excuse not to be. And that's why I love her. I knew I had to do something. I wasn't sure exactly what that something was until I started writing this book. Most parents who go through something like this stay in their shell. So to courageously bounce back and say, listen, this is my story. This is what I went through. I mean, this is a story that's told through her son's eyes watching over her from heaven. I was getting ready to publish the book and I had sent everything to the publisher and it was all ready to go. His birthday has a big impact on me as does his anniversary date. And I was at work in this old building. This is a, this building is about 100 years old. I mean, it's an old school building. And so I just, I just went up the steps and I walked around the corner. There's room 314, I don't know why I chose that one. The door was open on the chalkboard in children's handwriting. It was, I love you, Mom. And it, it just, you know, it was, <laughs> it's like, Thank you. You just made my day. I'm okay now. I'm okay. It was like I needed a sign, and he gave me a sign. How hard is it to write a book about burying your son? And she did that for other people. She did that to show that there is something more, something that can come out of it, something that all is not lost. I remember when we were running her campaign and we just started getting in all these messages from other people who had lost children. You're taking them from this place where their life is over to a place where there might be still some hope. The biggest thing is listening. I think as a grieving parent, you are afraid that people are going to forget your child. And that probably is more hurtful than anything else. Everybody knows that I love my children and that I would lay down my life for them and that losing my son was the most devastating thing that has ever happened to me. I just couldn't let that define me. I, I couldn't let that take over. unmatched, imprescribable drug that is better than anything. She brings the best out of the people around her, and that's really the most inspiring thing about her. She believes that my brother was put on earth for a certain reason, and he passed away for a certain reason, and she was put here for a reason, and so was I, and she's put here to help out as many people as she can. She would have never written a book about it. She would have never talked about it. She would have never done anything about it and made it public if she didn't believe that. That's my mama. <laughs>